Whose fault is it that Asian men keep getting disrespected in America? We're going to talk about it because this video is going viral. Yeah, I want to say this is one of the most viral videos regarding this topic in a long time. It's got about 200,000 views in three days. Let's run the clip from Hans Y. What's your first reaction when you see this picture? Is it what a lovely couple or they look happy together? Or is it this, this, or this? Asian dudes just suck. Asian men are generally perceived as unattractive. What's what's wrong with being an Asian guy? Sometimes, like, I'm blown away by the amount of racism. Why do Asian men get so much hate? How come no one cares? And what can Asian men do about it? Boom! You know what he felt like? It felt like he dropped almost like a like a compilation video. Yeah, and again, guys, you know, I know that this topic has come up on this channel before, and some people think it's like we're beating a dead horse, but actually the fact that there's still new clips constantly happening and coming out in the public that fall within this whole narrative that's why we got to talk about it. it's still relevant even in 2024 even though things are getting better we all understand that but it's still happening listen clips from the past two weeks that fit into this narrative that he didn't even put into this video are uh jen tran the bachelorette being like yeah it really is unfortunate there's no asian guys in the bachelorette Anyway, who cares? And also Kevin Hart being racist to Kai Sinat friend, uh, Kai Sinat's friend Ray. So anyway, guys, um, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce at smalasauce.com. Um, Andrew, when this video got posted on Reddit, somebody said, if Fung Bros could approach these types of videos in a serious manner, maybe things could change because they just make jokes out of it. Oh, okay. All right, so you want us to be serious about this video? Well, let's keep it serious, guys. I will, I will limit the amount of jokes I was going to make. Usually, I like humor as a vehicle. But fine. You think that us taking it seriously is actually going to change it even more? Then let's see what happens. Well, they, he said be merciless against racism and fight back. Sure. All right. Fine. You know what? We're going to take a serious approach to this video. You guys stay strapped in because it's going to be a long one. And we got a lot to break down. We're going to break down the video's main points. We're going to break down a bunch of comments. Our own feedback and our own thoughts on the actionable items that Hans provided in this video, and then there's the whole comment section. So, so, yeah, real quick, real quick. By the way, Andrew, what counts as an Asian man? This is a really funny graphic compiling the average face of Asia leaders by region. Right. I would say, in a way, all these guys get shaded, but let's just say for the sake of the video, and I believe who Hans Wai was referring to more, we're talking about East Asia and Southeast Asia primarily. Oh, yeah. I'm not well, saying it doesn't apply to Central Asia and South Asia, though. Yeah, but I would say definitely the uh, jokes is, you know, if you ever been called the C word or the G word, you're, you're Asian. Right. So <laughs> point number one, Andrew, he dissed the Auntie Lou's who are uh, Asian women who have publicly and proudly denounced Asian men on various public podcasts, platforms, TV shows for, for I guess, decades. Yeah, no, this has happened for decades and actually still happens to this day. He's, he's brought up some very relevant podcast clips. Uh, so, and then point number two, he brings up Boba liberals who he feels like are just as bad as some racists because they justify Asian racism by saying Asians are also racist too and that Asians are not like other minorities therefore downplaying how big of anti-Asian racism is right if Asians get attacked in the streets and the first thought is like what structural things did Asians do to deserve like an older Asian lady getting attacked on the street that is what I think he is referring right. to. Uh, point number three, he brings up mainstream media and social media representation. Mainstream media, as we know, has not been always good to Asian guys. Definitely has always portrayed us as nerdy, weak, foreign, foreigner men. It's getting better now. As you, we, you're talking about the little weenie dweeb calculators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we document, though, it's getting a lot better, obviously. Social media has allowed for unfiltered hate against Asian men in the comments section, of course, as he points out. Point number four, he says the normalization of Uncle Chan Okay, this is the opposite of Auntie Lou's. Uncle Chan's are those Asian guys who sell out Asians for profit and everybody accepts it. You know, these are guys who they feel like are making fun of Asians. Uh, or, or, to make or doubling down or tripling down on the stereotypes to be able to extract monetary value for their own life. Right. So at the end of the video of Hans Wise video, and you can watch the whole video at this link down below, he ends off and says... 
basically Asian men need to empower themselves. They need to work out, get more fit and organize together. So that was the basic summary of his video. Right, right, right. So I guess we got to get, he, he doesn't do this part, but Andrew, whose fault is it? Like, Ooh. cause he didn't assign pie chart percentages or a sequence of events, you know, like chicken or the egg, egg before the chicken. Like he didn't really like take it to that level, right? He did not assign percentages to the question of whose fault is it? And I think that's, and it's, and it's a lot of people's faults. Let me just say this, but the pie distribution, a lot of people are curious about it. And I think this is the thing for me, a lot of people get caught up on the exit, like their estimation of the exact percentage of like, oh, well, it was like mostly Asian women's fault or, oh, it's mostly the media's fault. Uh, they, they make up 50% of the reason why. We can get down to the nitty gritty and just debate this over and over again. It's actually not that important, guys. Right. I think it's important to identify the main notable factors, uh, but also more also identify uh, what, uh, what you can do about it. But either way, I feel like it's on us to also still share what we think about the pie chart, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, I'll say this. I think he left some things out of the video. Um, I think he wanted to make it simple enough that people could understand, and I'm not sure. But it's like, even, uh, we're going to get into point by point. Right. I, I'm going to get into the granularity of it. Uh, David, we, we got to talk about the Auntie Lou situation. So and, we're addressing point number one. Yeah, yeah. And Asian women who have been known, not all Asian women, actually the majority of Asian women have not done this, thankfully. But there has been a sizable amount who have spoken out and dissed Asian dudes for almost no reason. Right. Unprovoked. But here's the key, though. And I want to keep it real here. I don't think Hans Wai mentioned this. These are women that Asian guys like and value. Find because, attractive. Because if they didn't value them, why would they be so heavily impacted? By, by the way, what they said is bad and heinous, but you you wouldn't be impacted by it. Uh, I, I think that even if they weren't attractive women, I think that it's still offensive. But of course, them being attractive and desirable women in a looks manner, right? Potentially exponentially matters more though. Yes, it does matter a lot more. We, we have to acknowledge that. So I think this is uh, a, a decent slice of it, but I think that usually when I think of the women who have dissed Asian guys or avoided Asian guys or publicly gone and, and dissed Asian guys, I would assume that something's got to come down to their family. So I, I usually blame it somewhere on the family, whether they, maybe the, maybe the Asian father abused them or left them or had a gambling issue and then they left them in a bad situation. So she has a bad uh, idea about no, no, Asian no. men. I think that that is certainly one possible scenario that has happened to some people. But another one is their family just coached them to go with the winners. Yes. Yes, because Asian culture in a feudalistic society, there's two ways to look at feudalism. You got to find the best Asian guy because it's feudalistic and only Asians can be royal. Or you became an American, so you're looking for American royalty, which is going to be Anglo. Guys, there are, you know what I'm saying? So you're almost being feudalistic, but applied to an American Exactly. Ladder. It's this ruthless pursuit of uh, moving up that does cause some of these women to uh, diss Asian guys. And what happens is, and you've, dude, if you know enough Asian women, that you've heard these stories where Asian moms, some Asian moms who are married to Asian fathers tell their daughters to not marry Asian. Yeah. I've heard that throughout multiple times. Well, what if the Asian mom was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the environment I came from, I found the best guy I could get. But for you, if you go do the same thing for me because you're American, it will be a white man. Right. But I think the whole publicly dissing Asian guys is definitely part of flaws in their personality and their own crappiness. You're saying not just people. living their life, but actually trying to discourage yeah. other oh, girls yeah. from dating Asian guys. Date who you want. Of course, we always say that. But to go out there and diss Asian dudes, trust me, it's somewhere in your upbringing. Like right. somewhere you found it normalized to to diss on Asian culture and to diss on Asian men. Maybe you don't think it's a big deal. Maybe these girls think they're just right. joking around, but it is not okay. It's not cool. Yeah, and I notice a lot of them, the girls who do that, they don't think their dad is cool or they harbor something against their dad and they don't think their brothers are cool. Oh yeah, and, and dude- they didn't have cool older cousins or anything. And, and no, I agree. They, they, if you slander Asian men publicly, unprovoked, right. you deserve some slander on the internet back, for sure. Let me just say this. Asian culture is different from other cultures. As an Eastern culture, we are more Confucian. We are more feudalistic. We can be very, very hierarchical. Let's just say this, Andrew. This is the, I'll just end on this. You know how Hollywood has made movies about the Wakanda female warriors? 
that I, I believe are based off Zulu warriors or um, uh, Telor, which yeah. is Namor. What's yes. his name? Talokan. Yeah. Talokan, which is the native Aztec and Mayans mm -hmm. fighting against the Spaniards. Okay. They will not make an equivalent thing for Asians. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, that will never exist in Hollywood because that's not the relationship between those civilizations and the white European civilization. So that, I'll just leave it at that. There will be no Wakanda. There will be no Talokan. Okay. Yeah, so you guys take from that what you will. It's just, it is what it is. It's different. Um, point number two. I think, uh, what do you think about Boba Liberals, Andrew? That was the uh, point. I honestly think the Boba Liberal thing was a little bit more relevant a year, few years ago. I actually don't think this movement is gaining any more traction. I don't think this group of people is increasing necessarily. I think that at a moment, they felt so strongly. So I think the pendulum is swinging. I think Boba Liberal thing is really not that, in my eyes, not that big of an issue. Because overwhelmingly, I think most people kind of get uh, uh, Let me tell you this. I think the conditions that create Boba Liberals, which is people studying Western history and modern Western history a lot more than Eastern history and leadership, it's like, I'm not saying that Asians in America should be like Asians in Asia, but you should. everybody should probably study Lee Kuan Yew and mm -hmm. really understand yep. that he's not left or right. He's like hyper pragmatic. To me, that's like the most Asian thing you can be if you really want to be Asian politically. Yeah. You got to be like Lee Kuan Yew. Lee Kuan Yew, man. Yeah, you should know at least a rough framework of his history. And let there be no mistakes about this. Whoever governs Singapore must have that iron in him or give it up. This is not a game of cards. This is your life and mine. I've spent a whole lifetime building this. And as long as I'm in charge, nobody's going to knock it down. Um, Andrew, point number three, what do you think? The media. Oh, yeah. The media has not been kind to Asian guys, and I think we've kind of shared uh, some of our opinions, but let me reiterate. I think the media makes an impact. Obviously, I know media impacts people's lives, especially when you're not exposed to this group of people. If you don't have a strong community around you and you watch all these images of Asian guys getting beat up, blah, 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 or do, do being goofy and being too, like, uh, uh, these dweebs and stuff, then it is going to affect you, especially when you don't have a strong backbone foundation. If your family isn't coaching you, if your community isn't coaching you, if you don't have a coach or an older brother or cousin coaching you, you are going to to be affected by the images of media and also i do understand that a lot of women and just everybody not just women but other non-asian people men and women get affected by media in the asian portrayal because yeah, media is a reflection of a societal wind or a societal right. tide and i would say maybe you could argue that particularly women even just like historically are more like want to go with society right so i mean i think that you can't blame it fully on the media, and we're going to get to the reasons why. I'm going to explain why. You cannot just blame the media. It's yeah. like if you go back to Chris Rock's set of like, it's the media, Chris, the media. You cannot blame it 100%. Like I, when it comes to self-accountability, if you're going to take accountability for all these other issues in the world, you have to use that same rule of self-accountability on yourself. Right. Now, but, 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 yeah, of course, don't look to Hollywood for empowerment yeah because you will not find it yeah. because their job if anything you'll find the opposite sure um i'll say this you know black people Andrew. there's uh in the black american community they always talk about how throughout the 1990s they had to make blood and crip movies boys in the hood new jack city and it took them a while until will smith started playing uh sort of like black roles that didn't have to do with his blackness and then you got the new black archetype with uh, Childish Gambino and Donald Glover. Mm. So even black Americans been here for like 400 years, went through a really crazy arc. So you're saying that possibly Asians are just behind in On our, arc. we're just behind in our development because we're newer to this country. I think that's an overlooked aspect. Okay. Because Fair. we, it's, yeah, like, look, they did with the John Singleton movies and et cetera, et cetera, uh -huh. all the way to, obviously they're in the Tyler Perry, but they also have uh, yeah. the other side. And uh, I, I went, one last thing on this, it's like uh, Asians now just barely started cracking what I consider cool money. This comes down to systems because 
when you have professional athletes, musicians, actors, and celebrities that all build this cool world together, usually it's white and black people, right? And let's just say traditionally white people uh, have these well-developed worlds and they all meet each other and hang out together. Then that builds a world and that attracts a lot of people. You mean like at Michael Rubin's like all white July yes. 4th party, like that was very much a lot of like- Exactly. We know Asians can get money, but it's not been known to be cool money. Even nerd money, mm -hmm. as powerful as it can be, shout out to Jensen Huang, it's not cool money. And sometimes, unfortunately, in America, you need some people to make cool money and introduce Asians into that world and, to get respect. And to your point, because you're actually addressing point number four about Uncle Chan's, there's dudes that would sell out the image of Asians to get invited to Michael Rubin's July 4th party. Right. And be with, like, Leo and Drake and, like, Right, cetera, right, cetera. right. And, and what I mean is, though, that... I guess it's weird because, like, if you're a nerd and you make all that money, like Jensen Huang, he's he about also, to be the richest dude on earth. He yeah. might be richer than Elon. No, he's worth hundreds of billions of dollars. But I'm saying, like, is he throwing these elite Asian parties to bring Asians together and make even Asian women and Asian parents and make all the Asians more proud? I'm sure he's doing some things. And believe me, I'm not discounting NVIDIA and saying that that's not, like, just because, you know, it's like a it's a tech company it doesn't mean that it's not impactful well but any asian guy who wants to pitch a tech company is going to get extra looks because of jensen huang but not necessarily in hollywood music media yeah. entertainment and, politics and when we're talking about the street mm. disrespect that we're talking about here and being desired by women we're talking about it's coolness we're talking about cool money i'm not i'm not a shout out to Je i'm shout out to all the asian billionaires i'm not I th that's real power that they're going to have real power, but it is not directly. It's indirectly. Right. It's not affecting help the everyday sociality of the way an Asian man gets treated in everyday interactions in America. We're not talking about a boardroom securing yeah. investment uh, yeah. for like these pitches. We're talking about just like going to the store, going out to like the club, a, night a club, middle class place, hanging or, out, like just how you, how you're perceived a by a restaurant or something. Regular people, you know, these things that affect your everyday life. People walking by you on the street, exactly. and bumping into you, whether they say sorry or just dismiss you or things yeah, like that. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, but the truth is. If Tim Chung, this guy walks in versus Jensen Huang, and you don't really know who is who, obviously the Tim Chung guy is going to get 10 times more respect right off the bat. In the Western society, because the, the, dif the difficult thing about Western society or specifically American society is the high school cool gladiator battles, they exist way beyond high school. And it's still and it's very difficult for us to... Accept that. Yes, yes, I get it. You're successful. You are educated. You make six figures. You have a 401k. You did what your parents told you to do. But part of the reason why we're suffering is that we're not cool. We're not seen as cool. Right, and, right, right. You know, no, so, there's a lot of Asian guys who make like 200k a year. You know what I mean? But it's just like they're not any other race of guy making 200k a year would like have a more... Yeah. easier time securing certain things in life. Yeah, and listen, if you make good money and you're secure in yourself and you think you live a good life, you don't have to worry about whatever we're talking in this video. I'm not forcing you to think about it. I'm just saying that if we're talking about Asian males' perceptions on an everyday scale, people like Tim Chung in a weird way matter more than Jensen Huang. Yes, in an everyday scale. That's what I'm saying. Right, I'm not saying that's right. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, your Asian, the Asian dad on your shoulder is like, that is so wrong. I what want the, to be what, friends with what, Jensen what, what is so wrong about American culture? But that's all we're talking about American culture. Yes. We're referring to the dynamics that we can't change that are burned in to this fishbowl. Sure, sure, Ultimately, sure. let's address the, la uh, address the last point, Andrew. This video could go on forever, but we want to keep it short here. Point number five, he gets into his solutions really quickly, right? He says, get more organized. First of all, he said, get more fit, right? And yes. cut to a low BMI. Yes, uh, goes without saying, I think it's good for everybody, men and women, but dude, if you are not fit, you can't do pull-ups, if you can't yeah. do push-ups, if you are flabby and you're short and you're chubby it's like dude come on like you you got to get fit that's the number one thing and that you have control over too yeah yeah yeah. specifically body fat percentage at a, at a like almost like a dexa scan type six level but i'm saying that like the tough part is i think a lot of dudes who are not taking care of that aspect they have a white friend let's just say that they grew up with in their or or from their engineering program that is doing has a cute asian girlfriend that put in about as much work as they did into their body right and they're like but that is so unfair i won't do it because it's unfair 
Yeah. Yeah. So they're like thinking about what's fair rather than what the situation calls for. Yeah. Don't expect things to be fair. It's not fair. I'll tell you this. It is not fair. Or go and overseas too where you there where there are different exchange rates and different uh, rates of arbitrage depending on where you go in the world. Yeah. Like the American world is going to be one of the tougher environments for an Asian guy without certain cards to have social success in. Exactly. Maybe one of the toughest. Exactly, exactly. So I think when it comes to empowering Asian guys, I think that was his last point is like, um, and like how do Asian guys empower themselves? Or how do Asian guys encourage themselves or, you know, energize themselves to make a change? And I think we talk about this and the first thing, and this is a hard conversation and we're having hard conversations here and I'm, not, I'm trying to not make as many jokes because this uh, comment said that we're too humorous in these types of videos. Stop joking. Uh, you got to address weakism when you talk about racism, when it comes to Asians, man. I think a lot of the racism is tied to us being viewed as weak. And we all know the stereotype is that we're viewed as weak. So then we ask ourselves, why? Why are we viewed right. as weak and what can we do about it? And is there something we can do about it or what? We're just weak forever? Like there's got to be something we could do. Right, right, right. I think a lot of it, this stuff is relative too. For example, like I'm only 5'8", Andrew. I was 8.8 .8 pounds when I was born, which shows that theoretically, genetically, I may have had a disposition to be fatter than an average person just due to like endomorphic body type. And it's just like, you know, you could date like shorter women and stuff like everything is relative. You know what I mean? Like it's relatively more difficult for me to have like that slim c-pop k-pop look you know mm -hmm. what i mean but then i just gotta uh eat more protein and eat less carbs and sugars and, and it's like i just feel like a lot of things it's a little bit like being a six foot tall player in the nba andrew we always talk about fred van fleet peyton pritchard if you guys saw their off-season training routine it is more difficult than probably 95 percent of other nba players mm -hmm. they have to think about everything fred van fleet said as a guy who's six foot tall i pretty much have to be like the perfect player I can't have any weaknesses just to even be six foot and stay in the NBA. Exactly, man. We're guys, you guys got to look into the training regiments of TJ McConnell, Fred Van Fleet, all these undersized points, even Chris Paul. People who don't look the part, right? Like these undersized guards are training all the time. They're doing super challenging stuff. They have to be super on point. They got to watch all the game film. They got to watch more game film than DeAndre Jordan. You know, these seven footers who are just born into a situation that makes the game easier for them, right? We all get it. Some people are born in situations where the life is easier. The game is easier to have a baseline social life, to have baseline girlfriends. It is easier for some people. And that's the truth. But you got to know your situation. If you're an undersized guard, that doesn't mean you can't be in the NBA. That doesn't mean Fred Van Fleet can't get an $80 million contract. That doesn't mean Peyton Pritchard yeah. can't, but they got to do more of the right things. Yeah, and I think it's hard because at the end, he's sort of asking for guys to like organize. And I think that elite groups of like Navy SEAL style guys can get more organized. But in terms of like a firmware download to all Asian American men that are going through this, and I'm not saying all are going through it. Some people like, let's just say society's oppressing Asian guys like ants, okay? I think this is an unbalanced analogy, but I'm just going to say the extreme version just so, so it can more crystallize in people's minds. Let's say we're all ants, Andrew, and the boot came down on the ant hill. Some, You know how the boot has treads? Not all the ants are going to get trampled. There's a few Asian guys that like get missed in even the boot trying to crush them. You know, whether they're like maybe super good looking or they're born into a super like clannish enclave that has its own dynamics that are completely outside of the Anglosphere. You know what I mean? Despite being in an Anglo... You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I just think that guys who went through the same thing, they should have teamwork and be like, uplift each other, but don't think it's going to be like the Matrix where we're all Agent Smith and we all get a download. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's one of the biggest things that I see on the internet that guys should not hope for. You mean guys are hoping for like a Asian male software update where it clicks on all Asian guys or all undersized Asian guys or, or like you just submit your email and you're like, hey, I need help. And then an email comes to you and then you download the, what, the DMG? The firmware file. update, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the executable file or whatever it is. And then you get the update. Yeah, it's just not going to be like that because that's just not how life works. A lot of these things are like muscles that are starting at an atrophy level yeah. to be well, built Well, I'll tell you this. The good news is that if you're an Asian guy and you learn how to study in the books, you can study for the looks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they're, like that's what 
all that's how women glow up if you look at all these like nerdy women who are introverted and they glow up it's just because they studied it the the information's out there you can study how to get better right Looks, it's just about now at this point the information is out there it's just about yeah. you having discipline and that fire and energy in you to take that path and if anything use this video if you wholeheartedly believe in it use this video as more fuel to charge yourself up for the journey ahead yeah. Because outside of like moving back to Asia or other parts of the world and things like that, and we could talk about that in a different video. If you're here and you want to excel in a conventional sense and right the wrongs that Asian men have been through in America, it's going to take a lot of work. Yeah. And that's why like the whole weakism thing to, to touch on that again, we, I say weakism because that's part of it's tied to our race. It's tied to how we're treated. It's because we're viewed as weak, whether it's physically weak, mentally weak, maybe verbally we're weak, right? Maybe personality-wise, we're not assertive. We're weak in that uh, assertiveness. Right. You know, whatever weak is to you, it's like, how do you, like, and you have to understand, like, if we're viewed this way by everybody, then to some extent, I'm not saying it's true in a locked-in, like, it's not going to be true forever, but essentially it's true to people right now. And, like, how does a vehicle, right, a vehicle, a car model get a bad safety rating? Well, it's been crashed. They did tests on it. And the tests have come out, at least in people's perception, that Asians are kind of weak. Right. So, anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Like I said, I am not disagreeing with Hans Y at all. I'm just providing some additional context. There's a reason why this video went viral. Tell us what you thought of our analysis. What should Asian guys do? Is it an individual thing? Is it a teamwork thing? Or are we just thinking about this the wrong way? Some guys in the comment section were like, just don't even think about it. I think it could work differently for different individuals because different individuals need to hear the story like a certain way for it to resonate with them let us know what you think in the comment section below until next time we the hop hop boys we out peace